Hello everyone, welcome to Deacon's Interval Talk. I'm your host, Deacon, and welcome back to another Deacon's Interval Talk episode on the channel, episode 26 on the channel, and today we have quite a bit of interval topics, not as much as last week, but we still have a bunch of topics to get into. Uh, then we have another, like, insane episode of Signings and Cuts, so you guys might get a get, uh, little annoyed by my voice because there is extreme amount of signings and cuts uh, then after that we have some training camp injuries one of the worst things that can happen is training camp injuries so we have like uh, a bunch of like long injuries there's no season ending injuries except uh one uh but then we have two reactions to get into then we have quick hits and then we have one question of the week i cannot wait to get right into this episode of deacons nfl talk All right, everybody, we're going to jump right into the first topic. All right, this one has been an on... You guys you guys are going to know the moment I uh, finish this sentence. This has been an ongoing topic for the last week or so, week or two. It's been close to around that two-week uh, timeline. But the 49ers and Brennan Ayuk are in trade talks with the Browns and Steelers. Yeah, I mean, this has been an ongoing topic for what feels like forever now. Feels like it's been going on. Like like I said, forever. Um, but yeah, two AFC North teams battling it out to try and sign Brandon Ayuk to a contract extension, and Brandon Ayuk's hopes a massive contract extension um, that could potentially make him a top five or top five five highest paid wide receiver in the league. But right now, I'm pretty sure it is up to Ayuk to choose which contract he wants. Um, so I feel like. I feel like it, it, it's either – I feel like where Ayuk is at at this point is either he wants more money, which obviously we figured that out a long time ago. He either wants more money from the Browns or Steelers. Like, if, let's say the Steelers pay him more, all right? Does he want to go with the Steelers? Or does he want to go to a team like the Browns who are in a better situation than the Steelers in, are in my opinion? So, I mean, I feel like if I was Ayuk, I would, be going, I would want to go to the Browns right now. But reports say that the 49ers could receive a veteran wide receiver and a few draft picks for Brendan Ayuk, which would make sense. I would say if I was a Browns or Steelers general manager or whoever decides to trades, I would say I'm going to trade. Like, all right, let's put, I'm going to put, we're going to do b- both teams, right? Let's say I'm in the Steelers' shoes. All right, I'm going to trade. Oh, this is tough. Because, I mean, the Steelers don't really have this top wide receiver other than George Pickens, and we're not trained George Pickens. So let's say, let's imagine that I'm the Steelers' general manager. What am I doing? And am, am I going to trade for Brandon Ayuk? I want to, but I also do not want to. Because if I have to uh, give up George Pickens, I'm not doing that. I'm not giving up George Pickens. Uh, I, I know Brandon Ayuk is better, but I would not give up George Pickens for Ayuk. Um... If I was the Steelers general manager, I would probably trade one one to two draft first round draft picks, and then maybe an additional third fourth round pick, maybe both. I feel like we're trading picks now. I mean, we could see a potential second round pick, but if I'm the Steelers right now, I'm not trading my wide receivers because I want an extra wide receiver, a receiver one. I'm trading two first round picks. And a third round pick, and possibly add a fourth round pick, or just do one, whichever the 49ers will accept. But that's what I'm doing for the Steelers. Now, the Browns, on the other hand, it's going to be a little bit easier on the Browns. All right. So for the Browns, we're trading this time instead of two for sure first round picks, we're trading one to two. All right. Whatever the 49ers take, um, maybe like a fourth, fifth round pick uh, in that trade as well. But we're also going to trade veteran wide receiver Amari Cooper to the 49ers because I feel like it's a lot easier on this on the Browns now because, I mean, you already have Jerry Judy and Amari Cooper and, oh, is there another receiver? They had Elijah Moore. Is he still there? I can't remember. I mean, you have another wide receiver there, and if you added Brandon Ayuk to the Jerry Judy mix, I feel like that would be really good for the Browns. 
I, I know Cooper's really good, but I feel like he might be in the mix of a IU trade. I mean, but I mean, the Browns and Steelers aren't the only teams involved with this. I mean, the, the Browns, Steelers, like I just talked about, and the Commanders and Patriots were both involved in this in the contract talks. Uh, the Commanders. Uh, could not afford Ayuk, and the Patriots weren't getting a great vibe from the 49ers or from, from Brandon Ayuk's agent or something. So the Commanders and Patriots dropped out. The Commanders dropped out a while back. I mean, longer. It's been longer since the Patriots have. So like the Patriots dropped out like a few days ago. But yeah, this has been an ongoing topic for what feels like forever. I don't know if it's gonna end before the season. It feels like every time though, like every time. I waste, or not waste, but every time, and like, I check NFL news. All right, is Brandon Ayuk traded? All right, he's not traded yet. And then I check again a few hours later, he's not traded yet. I, like, feel like everyone is so anxious to see what happens with Brandon Ayuk. And I, I'll admit, I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see what happens, too. Uh, we will see what happens. But, yeah, like I said, if Ayuk was traded to the Browns, Amari Cooper could be involved. Uh, but the 25th pick in the 2020 uh, draft caught 75 passes for 1,402 yards and seven touchdowns. So, yeah, he's coming off his best year on the 49ers and arguably his best year of his career so far. But, yeah, I feel like if I had to predict what will happen to Brandon Ayuk, I put I put this as a poll in the community tab uh, where will Brandon Ayuk get traded to. The the favorite right now, uh, as of you guys, is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, the Steelers have 61% of the votes and the Browns have 26. Other is 13%. Um, but if I had to predict, I would probably say that the Browns get the nod only because the Browns are adding a wide receiver in there. I know the Steelers are like so close. I feel like the Steelers are 100% the favorite right now, but I feel like the Browns could, I feel like, I feel like the Browns could offer a better deal than the Steelers could, but right now the Steelers are the heavy favorite, but I'd have to go to the Browns right now. So, all right, second topic. All right, the Cardinals signed linebacker Zaven Collins to a two-year extension. All right, this this is a great deal for him. He's coming off a really good year uh, for the Cardinals. The deal is worth up to $14 million and includes $11.25 million guaranteed. So a good contract for Collins. I mean, he's coming off a really good season uh, on the Cardinals. I mean, I feel like he's he proved himself last year that he, he can be a top linebacker in the league. I truly believe that. Um, but Collins was coming off the final year of his rookie contract after the Cardinals declined his fifth-year option in April. So, you know, it's one of those things, like kind of like how the Steelers went with Najee Harris. You know, they they declined his fifth-year option. We'll see what happens with him. But, yeah, I'm, the Cardinals, I mean, I feel like this is a smart move. I feel like he could definitely be a, a top 10, maybe top 12 linebacker in the league at some point. Um, he definitely proved it last year. I mean, Collins will remain with the team through 2026. Uh, and if the team agreed to his fifth-year option, Collins would have received $13.25 million guaranteed. Guaranteed. So he would have had more money if they accepted his fifth-year option. We know some things don't go out as well. But, yeah, really good really good extension for uh, Collins. And he'll be with the team, what, through, 2020, uh, through 2026. So he'll get a new contract by 2026. Or 2027, sometime in that range. But the 16th pick in the 2021 uh, draft from Tulsa generated 41 tackles, three and a half sacks, and three passes defense in 2023. So I mean, really good year for him. Um, he's definitely gonna have a, a lot more years great ahead of him. So third topic. All right, this one uh, is a restructured contract. All right, the Dolphins and Tyreek Hill agreed to a restructured contract. Um, Restructured ninety million dollar contract over the next three seasons. Um, at first, when I saw this, I thought this, the Dolphins were extending him or re-signing him. But then I was like, "There's no way he's getting. He's only getting paid ninety million dollars." I mean, we're talking about Tyreek Hill is um, right now the reigning number one player um, of twenty twenty four according to the NFL, and people are saying that Mahomes got snubbed. Like, what are we? I don't know how much. I don't know how, why. Yeah, I mean, people that say that are 100% delusional because Mahomes had an off year. Tyreek Hill had an MVP-like year. Um, but the deal is worth $65 million in guaranteed money and brings him to $106.5 million in fully guaranteed money. Like Obviously, like I said, Tyreek Hill had an MVP-like season. 
I mean, he almost he was he was close to to a two thousand yard season. I mean, he was like very close. I would not have been shocked if he would have gotten it. Um, but yeah, this is very good for Tyreek Hill and very good for the Dolphins. Um, because obviously we're talking about one of the best receivers in the NFL right now. I mean, I would say he's probably second behind Justin Jefferson. I feel like we could all agree on that. That that is a debate though. Justin Jefferson is against Tyreek Hill. That is a ongoing debate. Um, but anyway, um, then uh, no years were added in the adjusted contract. Uh, but Hill also ranks uh, in the NFL. He ranks fourth in the NFL um, with his thirty million dollars per season average behind Justin Jefferson, who has thirty five million dollars. AJ Brown, who has thirty-two million dollars, and Amon Ross St. Brown, who has thirty million dollars. So yeah, your top four uh, paid wise per season average. So yeah, very good deal for the Dolphins here. I mean, so yeah, it's restructured. So basically, they like added money or something. Um, but Hill is Hill Hill is now entering his third year in Miami after the Chiefs traded him in a blockbuster trade to the Dolphins. We all remember that in like what twenty twenty two. I remember watching that happen. I was absolutely shocked. But he is coming off an outstanding season, recording 13 touchdowns uh, and league-leading 1,799 receiving yards. That's crazy. Like I said, MVP-like season. I mean, he was a yard shy of 1,800. So, I mean, yeah, congrats to Hill for the deal. And I know at some point he will break the receiving yards record. He's going to at some point. I mean, he, he you have the speed for that. I mean, he, he has the speed for it 100%. So I would not be surprised if he did it. All right, we have another contract extension. Uh, almost all of these, pretty much half of the topics are contract extensions. Uh, but Chiefs, uh, the Chiefs, uh, Kansas City Chiefs make Harrison Butker the highest paid kicker in the NFL, earning $25.6 million extension. This is great for Harrison Butker. Obviously, he's highest paid, so he's over Justin Tucker. Uh, Bucker agreed to a four-year deal, which includes $17.75 million guaranteed, and it, it is reported that ne- that Bucker negotiated the deal himself, which that's actually kind of that's kind of crazy. Um, Harrison Bucker proved himself to be a top three kicker in the league. I mean, if I ha- if we had to argue, I feel like we could all agree that Harrison Bucker is probably the th- second best kicker in the league right now. Obviously, behind Justin Tucker, even though people say he fell off or is washed for some reason. But yeah, I think we could all agree that he's the second best kicker in the NFL, and that Jake Elliott is probably third. So I mean, yeah, he definitely deserves this. I mean, he has the record. For, he has the record for the farthest uh, kick in a Super Bowl. So I mean, he owns that record after stealing it from Jake Moody, the 49ers kicker, in the same Super Bowl. Uh, but Bucker uh, passes Jake Elliott and Justin Tucker, earning six million dollars in AAV. Um, in 2023, Buckhurst made 33 of 35 field goals, so he just missed two, and 38 for 38 on extra points, so he went perfect for extra points. He he proved himself to be one of the best kickers in the league, and it's, it's just crazy. Uh, like, I mean, for a kicker, 25.6 million dollars, that's impressive. All right, I know for like the average uh person that gets the player the player that gets p- paid. It's not a lot, but I feel like that's good for a kicker. So, but B- Bucker, sorry, I cannot speak today. Bucker has been a part of all three recent Super Bowl victories with the Chiefs. So they're like what three for four on the last five Super Bowls, I believe. So yeah, they've proven to be a top team in the NFL, and don't sleep on them. I'll tell you that. All right, the Browns. All right, unveil unveil plans. For a $2.4 billion domed stadium. This stadium is a little bit... I don't know how to describe it. But it's not the worst. But it's also not the best. Alright, I'm going to pull up some pictures here. I'm going to look at the Brown Stadium. Alright. So there's like three or four pictures. Here's the first one. Uh, right now. So as you can see, it's inside of the stadium. Is it just me, or does it look a little weird? Like, I just don't know what it is. Like, my question is, is, like, one side of the stadium, like, blocked off and shaded, and the other side is not? Or is that a retractable roof? I don't know what that is, 
but it just doesn't look natural. Like, I don't know. If you're looking at it right now, if you're on audio or listening right now, like, come back and, like, look at this part, watch this part. I mean, it just looks out of order to me. Is it? Is it just me, or is it actually out of order? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the glass. I always love, like, a glass stadium. But it just looks so weird. I do not know why. I don't know what it is about it. It just doesn't... Yeah, I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, it's not the worst stadium that could that could ever be created. But, like, I, I don't know, all right? But the Browns' new home would no longer be in Cleveland. It would be in Brook Park, all right? So just an update on that. Here's another picture. Right there doesn't look bad, but it just looks... I don't know. Just say whatever you want to say about it. I mean, I, was, I can see how it looks cool. It almost looks small for some reason on this picture. But, like, I don't know what it is about it. I mean, that's this picture isn't terrible. I mean, it's obviously not as good as the first one, even though the first one isn't that good either. Uh, let me see if I can find some more right here. Here's one on, like, I'm guessing... Is this like the back of the stadium or the front of the stadium? Um, yeah, pretty much the same as the uh, as the last picture we just looked at. Where is that one of the top? Like there was one of the there was one of the, and it was like on top of the stadium. Like there was a camera from the sky, and it just looked so like weird. Is this it? No, it's not. I don't I don't know why, but it, it's just here. It is right here. Doesn't that just look like a bunch of blocks? attached together it just looks so weird and i i'm not a big fan of it not gonna lie i mean 2.4 billion dollars for this are you serious Uh, okay whatever i mean browns fans i'm sorry okay i'm not i'm not hating on this stadium because i'm a Bengals fan we're division rivals i feel like even some browns fans could say it looks weird but the state of Ohio would host its first Super Bowl at some point if the stadium was built. So, yeah, because, I mean, the stadiums in Ohio, I mean, they're just not that good. Um, not as good as, like, Las Vegas or what? Uh, SoFi, you know. Um, but, all right. We're going to go to the second to last topic. Or, sorry, the last topic. Um, Super Bowl LII, or 52. Uh, hero quarterback Nick Foles announces retirement as a Philadelphia Eagle. I don't like this is like I feel like he was forgotten a little bit. Um, but the Eagles will hold a ceremony honoring Foles on September 16th. Uh, there has not been an NFL player or sorry, there has not been a player in NFL history to throw and catch a touchdown in the postseason like Nick Foles. If you guys wondering, if you guys do not know what I'm talking about. I'm going to pull it up right here. All right. Super Bowl 52. All right, I'm going to play it right now. All right, 15 to 12. 38 seconds left in the second quarter. Fourth and goal. All right, the Eagles are ahead by three points. It's an odd scoring, but whatever. They're lining up. This is what this is called the Philly Special. I remember watching this live. I was, like, very young. And look at this. He goes out catches a touchdown pass and that is just crazy like I feel like that is one of the most memorable plays in our time like in the 2000s or so like look at ready replay right here he's sliding over he just stands there and nobody even like just finds like nobody even knows what's happening like I feel like that is the most I feel like that that might be the most iconic play that I have ever watched, like, not in person, but that I've watched on live TV. I feel like that's the most iconic play that I've ever, that's ever, I've like, been right in front of my eyes. Like, that was the most memorable, like, that's, like I said, when someone retires or passes away, there's always this one play that re- that reminds me of them. There has not been a player to wear number nine than a number nine jersey on the Eagles since Nick Foles, and Foles also has the most completion percentage in the postseason, of sixty eight point one percent ahead of Patrick Mahomes, who has sixty seven point nine percent. If in case you guys didn't know, uh, not really the backstory, 
but some of the newcomers to the NFL or some people that don't really know what happened, Nick Foles was not a starting quarterback. He was not the starting quarterback of the Eagles. All right, I'm pretty sure was it Marcus Mariota? Why is that? Why is it coming to my mind? But Nick Foles was a backup quarterback playing in the Super Bowl, and he's the reason the team won the Super Bowl. I mean, I mean the third round pick in 2012 had a 20, 29 and 29 record. I mean, like that is the craziest play that I have ever seen, like that I've ever like watched happen. Um, but I mean, it's just. It's just crazy. Like, I'm at loss of words. I mean, some of you guys know that I used to be a Patriots fan. And when I was watching that live as a Patriots fan, the only reason I am here doing these uh, talk shows today is because of that Super Bowl right there. All right. that The first NFL game I ever watched was Super Bowl 52. And boy, was it a one, one to remember. That is the first uh, game I've ever watched in football. And I would not be here today if I hadn't watched that Super Bowl. But, like, I mean, during his 12-year career, Foles played for the Eagles, Rams, uh, Chiefs, Jaguars, Bears, and Colts. Got that right? So, he had a long career, but he was most uh, remembered for the Eagles. And it's just, yeah, I mean, it it was crazy. I feel like, I, I think the, the Eagles Super Bowl ring had Foles on it, like, on the Super Bowl ring. So, it's really cool. When you have a... Your the name of your last name on a Super Bowl ring, you know you did something special. But that is all for NFL topics. All right, we're closing in. Hey, we're not over that uh, show time yet, but we're getting there. Signings and cuts. This is gonna get us well over to show time. All right, please bear with me here. Do not get tired of my voice, even though you might. Hey, just a reminder though. Starting, uh, when is it? It starts in September, where we will no longer have signings and cuts. The first episode without signings and cuts will be September 7th. All right. So we're almost done. We're getting there. All right. Falcons sign quarterback John Paddock, uh, wide receiver Dalen, Dalen Baldwin, and punter Ryan Sanborn. Bears sign defensive back Rowe Torrance. Cowboys sign defensive end Al Quadin Muhammad. Defensive end Shaka Tony, linebacker Darius Harris. Linebacker Nick Vigil and defensive tackle Albert Huggins. Chiefs signed uh, tight end G- Georgius Spivy or Spivey. Patriots signed offensive tackle K- Kellen Disk, uh, safety AJ Thomas, and long snapper Tugger Addington. Panthers signed safety Clayton Isbell, defensive back Anthony Brown, tight end Jacob Hollister, and qu- quarterback Jake Jake Luton. Tight end Jesper Horstead and safety Caden Stearns. A lot of signings there. Texans signs off Texans. Signed offensive tackle Cameron Irving. Jaguars signed running back Gary Brightwell. Tight end Chris Merrick. M- my Eric. Defensive tackle Jonathan Marshall. Safety Adrian Amos. And defensive end Breland Speaks. Uh, Saints signed t- tight end Mason Fairchild. Tight end Kevin Rader. Linebacker Mike Rose. And offensive tackle Mark Evans the second. Eagles signed tight end Kevin Fulsk. And linebacker Shaquille Quarterman. Quarterman. Qu- Qual- Bill signed linebacker Shane Simon. Browns signed... Corner, Fayon Hicks. Defensive end, Marcus Haynes. Linebacker, Landon Honeycutt. And long snapper, Rex Sanera. Commander signed defensive tackle, Tyler Stallworth. Offensive lineman, J.C. Hassenauer. And offensive tackle, Alex Taylor. Seahawks signed linebacker, Blake Lynch. Defensive tackle, Kyan Bars. Defensive tackle, Mario Kendricks. And corner, Willie Roberts. And we still have a lot more. 49ers signed offensive guard Lewis Kidd, right, running back Matt Breida, who, uh, who was a former 40, 49er, uh, running back Keyshawn Vaughn, wide receiver John Trey Kirkland, wide receiver Robbie Chosen, who was Robbie Anderson, uh, defensive end Jonathan Garvin, and safety Tracy, Tracy Walker. Cardinals signed outside linebacker Marcus Haynes and corner Delonte Hood. Ravens signed wide receiver Russell Gage. Broncos signed linebacker Alec Mock. Raiders signed wide receiver Dax Milne. Chargers signed quarterback Luis Perez, who I believe was a UFO quarterback. Uh, U- Seahawks signed offensive lineman Connor Williams and o- outside linebacker Jamie Sheriff. Rams signed offensive lineman Connor McDermott. Offensive tackle Matt Kate Kasky and offensive lineman Alec Lindstrom. Bengals signed defensive end uh, Andre Carter. Defensive tackle Joshua Pryor and defensive tackle Carlos Davis. Packers signed defensive lineman Brevin Allen, defensive lineman Zach Morton, and kicker Alex Hale. 
Colts sign uh, center Ryan Cole. D- Dolphins sign wide receiver Mark Harley Jr. Eagles sign tight end Armani Rogers. Steelers sign linebacker Easton Gibbs and defensive back Jalen Elliott. Buccaneers sign offensive lineman Ryan Johnson. All right, that's all all the signings. There's not – okay, yeah, there's probably more cuts than signings. All right, cuts. The Bears cut long snapper Cameron Lyons. Cowboys uh, cut wide receiver Corey Crooms and linebacker Byron Vons. Uh, Broncos cut defensive tackle Brandon Matterson. Safety Caden Stearns. Outside linebacker Ronnie Perkins. Chiefs cut wide receiver Isaiah Ga- Gaithings. I feel like I've heard that name a lot. Patriots cut running back Deshaun Fenwick. Offensive tackle Tyron Wheatley Jr. And wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster. That is a new cut that happened Friday at like 3. Uh, Browns cut uh, center Brian Allen, wide receiver Devin Carter, wide receiver Tavian Robinson, uh, linebacker Charlie Thomas, wide receiver Jalen Camp, offensive tackle Chim Okorafora, or Okorafor, Okorafor, and corner Fayne Hicks. Panthers cut tight end Curtis Hodges, defensive back Keandre Thomas, wide receiver Devin Carter, wide receiver Tavian Robinson, wide receiver Cam Sims, uh, J.D. DiRenzo, uh, tight ends uh, Steven Sullivan, and defensive back Caden Stearns. Texans cut off to tackle Jalen Thomas. Jaguars cut running back Lorenzo Lingard. Tight end Josh Peterson. Defensive tackle Adam Gossis. And defensive lineman Deshaun Dixon. All right, we're one page through. We have one and a half more pages left to go. Dolphins cut offensive lineman Ireland Brown. Saints cut wide receiver Jermaine Jackson. Tight end Jesper Horstead. Quarterback Nathan Peterman. Uh, Chandler Brewer. Tight end Mason Fairchild. And tight end Tommy Hudson. Eagles cut tight end McCallan Castles, offensive lineman Jason Poe, and wide receiver Shaq Davis. My throat was getting so dry from keeping my mouth from talking. That's crazy. Bills cut defensive end David Ugwogubu. Uh, Commanders cut corner Christian Holmes, tight end Armani Rogers, and offensive tackle Alex Ecking Bulu. Seahawks cut center Mike Nowitzki, outside linebacker Joshua Onigbu, Onigibu, sorry, Onig, Onigibu. Uh, wide receiver Marcus Sims, defensive tackle Matt Goddell, defensive tackle Rodney Matthews. Packers cut quarterback Jacob Eason, wide receiver Roy Starkley, corner Don Collis. Uh, the Jets cut running back Joshua Corbin and wide, res- wide receiver uh, Hames L. Zayat. Raiders cut defensive tackle Tamari Fox. Chargers cut outside linebacker Sa- Savian Jackson. Rams cut tight end Neil Johnson and defensive back Kenny Logan Jr. Bengals cut wide receiver Trey Mosley. And punter Austin McNarma, Mc, McNamara. Dolphins cut offensive lineman Chase and Hines. Steelers cut linebacker Tyler Murray. And defensive back Nathan Meters. Uh, 49ers cut wide receiver Tariq Owens. And safety Eric Harris. And then the last cut of the week. Cardinals cut offensive lineman Carter O'Donnell. That took up six minutes. I cannot believe that. I predicted five. Let, let me see though. Let me just double check here. See if we have any more. That way I don't have as much as next week. See if there's any more... Uh, update. Um, I don't know if this is a big topic or not, because I've never heard of him before. But uh, the Dallas Cowboys are trading corner Andrew Booth to the Minnesota Vikings. All right, that that I just saw that. So that's that's an update there. Um. Uh, the uh, the Cowboys will receive corner Na- Nashawn Wright. So that might be a topic next week. I just wanted to get to it there. <coughs> I'm sorry. My my throat is like so dry to that. All right, here we go. We have three more. 49ers just signed defensive lineman Jonathan Garvin uh, and punter Presley Harvin the third, And the 49ers cut tight end Logan Thomas. That's two back-to-back episodes where we've had the 49ers come with signings or cuts out of nowhere. I don't know why. All right. We have some injuries to get to. All right, 49ers running back Christian McCaffrey suffers from calf injury and will likely miss weeks of practice. All right, uh, he's expected to be back by week one. But Panthers, hopeful hopeful running back Jonathan Brooks will return in three to four weeks because, because he is still recovering from an ACL injury in November uh, that he suffered on t- in Texas uh, when he was on the Texas Longhorns in college football. Colts wide receiver Josh Downs is dealing with a high ankle sprain and will miss four to six weeks. Talk to Joe Burrow about that one. Bengal, or sorry, not Bengals. Panthers rookie wide receiver Xavier Leggett, day to day with an injury. It's not reported what injury that is though. All right, we have some reactions. We have two reactions. 
All right. First off, start off with the joint practice between the New York Giants and Detroit Lions. All right, this is before the preseason opener that the both teams had. We're going to play it right here. All right, Malik Neighbors getting the ball thrown to him, and it's dropped. All right, the crazy part is he goes to hit, oh, sneak peek, goes to hit a player. I believe, yeah, you can see he just hits him. It's not even the player he was throwing punches, dude. Like, look at that. And, like, obviously, yeah, I mean, wow. I mean, they're going at it. I mean, I also heard that uh, the both teams were fined two hundred thousand dollars for this. So, I mean, there's there was definitely punishment after that. So, probably a bunch of push-ups. But yeah, I mean, I don't know why this always happens. You can see what's his name, thirty-one, who just went in the fight. That his guardian cap fell off. But, I mean, just wow. I mean, I'm kind of surprised to see. I mean, y'all act like toddlers out here. All right. The only reactions we have are fights. All right. We have a DK Metcalf fight. All right. This one's a little bit harder to see. So, prepare yourself. Um, this, this was caught on live TV. The quality, I know, it sucks. But, all right. Look in the background. Don't look at the reporters. You can see. D I'll play this twice so you can see it. And here's DK Metcalf in the background swinging his helmet at a teammate. I mean, that's crazy. All right, I'll play it one more time. There it is. He just he, th he threw the helmet at him. So, I mean, just one. All right, I'll play it one more time for you guys if you guys didn't see it. There it is right there. He throws the helmet. Uh, you just can't do that. Like, I don't know what DK was doing. Obviously, I'm not really surprised that he was doing this. Or is any is anyone surprised that he's honestly getting into fights with his own teammates? I'm, I'm not, honestly. But all right, quick hits. Then we have a question of the week. We're a little bit over time, but not like last week. Last week was, huh, huh. Uh, Titans signed uh, safety Quandre Diggs to a one-year deal worth up to $5 million. In 2023, Diggs generated uh, 95 tackles, five passes defensed, and one uh, interception. Diggs entered his 10th season, is entering uh, his 10th season in the NFL, reuniting with teammate Jamal Adams, who signed uh, with the Titans in early July. A right, man arrested in Kansas City after a shooting at a concert. Well, trying to, I guess. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Chris Jones were at a Morgan Wallen uh, concert. Uh, the man threatened to shoot two Chiefs players at the Morgan Wallen, Morgan Wallen concert. Um, it is not reported who he was targeting. I mean, that's something that's still to be determined. Um... But the suspect identifies uh, as Aaron Brown, who was hit with a felony charge. Uh, the concert was delayed 40 minutes. It's not reported who Brown was targeting, like I said. But the concert, uh, before the concert, uh, he sent out a tweet saying that he would uh, take a shot afterwards, um, like after the concert or whatever. But he said afterwards uh, that it was a joke and a stupid idea. Like, what are we doing? Like, this generation is absolutely messed up. Like, joking around that he was going to shoot, that he was going to fire at somebody. Like, what is happening? This, I'm at a loss of words. Like, can we, like, please stop being stupid? Like, what are we doing? Like, okay, this is, like, at if I'm, like, somebody that, I, I obviously don't make fun of me because I'm no I'm no like I don't I'm don't st pay close attention to politics or anything like that or just any of this kind of stuff in general. But I'm 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 putting this guy in prison. Like this guy needs to learn his lesson. Like I'm at loss of words right now. I just don't know what he was thinking and how on earth he was going to get away with this. Because you're not going to. And I don't know. These that is the stupidest idea I've heard. All month. Probably all year. And there's been plenty of stupid ideas in my life. I mean, in the past year, too. Like, this is absolutely absurd. I don't know what was happening here. Whatever. Just forget that one. Uh, and then third one. Former Super Bowl champion Cowboys running back Dwayne Thomas dies at 77. All right. Thomas was a huge part of the Cowboys' first Super Bowl uh, win. Thomas wanted to get paid more entering this 1971 season, but the Cowboys eventually traded him to the New England Patriots. I'm sorry about the voice crack. Um, but 
yeah, really unfortunate legend for sure. Uh, he was fun to watch. If you can find some highlights, look him up. All right, Rams wide receiver Puka Nakua week to week with a knee injury. All right, this is concerning right here. Uh, Nakua remained on the sideline with a bag of ice wrapped around his knee. Uh, according to ESPN, the injury is not serious. And on Tuesday, head coach Sean McVay said he expected Nakua back by week one. Hope for the best for uh, Nakua right there. But Nakua joins teammates Alaric Jackson, Rob Havenstein, and Jonah Jackson, who are all dealing with injuries. So hopefully all those pe- players can uh, heal up because you're going to need it for week one. All right, last one, or sorry, second to last. Falcons wide receiver Rondale Moore suffers season ending knee injury. This is unfortunate. I mean, definitely an underrated receiver. He's fast. I mean, during his time in Arizona, he caught 135 passes for 1,201 yards and three touchdowns. So it's unfortunate. It's always unfortunate when you have a seasoning injury to a practice and training camp to a game that doesn't count, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, it happens. I mean, last week we had two seasoning injuries, but one on the Colts, one on the Cowboys, I believe. So it's just really unfortunate. All right, Saints re-signed linebacker Pete Werner to a three-year, $25 million uh, and $17.5 million guaranteed contract. That's really good for Pete Werner. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I've never heard of him, but he he's coming off a great year. I mean, he will remain with the New Orleans through 2027. But yeah, good news for him and the Saints right there. He's he's going he's gonna to do a, have another great season for sure. Question of the week. Just a little bit over time. Hopefully it won't be much longer. All right, this question is yet to be answered, and it's been a question for a long time. What are Jerry Jones and the Cowboys doing? Are we like, this is the second stupidest thing I've heard all week, but what Jerry Jones said, like, so at first he was like, yeah, yeah, we'll get this contract done with C.D. Lamb and all that, but now Stephen Jones is saying, he has no sense of urgency. Like, what are we doing? This is arguably a top two wide receiver, if not the third best wide receiver in the NFL. And we're not worried that he's going to want to trade or want to go elsewhere. I would not be surprised if he was not in a Cowboys uniform. He's going to be He's gonna be out of one at some point. Like, what are we doing? I've already told you guys what to do twice. Like if you guys missed out, um, I said, if we're cutting Dak Prescott or trading Dak Prescott, we're we're done. All right, we're either gonna draft a quarterback or trade for a quarterback using Dak Prescott. Number two, all right, we're re-signing C.D. Lamb. We have to, we have to re-sign C.D. Lamb. How hard is it? Oh my, the, I mean, obviously the receiver market has blew up since, but and then number three. We're gonna trade Micah Parsons, but it, uh, number three is basically if we can if if we can re-sign Micah Parsons, 100% we're re-signing Micah Parsons. If we can't, number four, we are trading Micah Parsons to the New England Patriots for Matthew Judon because him and the Patriots are having this weird thing that's happening right now. So I mean, Dallas, listen up, all right, take it from me, or take it from somebody else. I don't know what what hap- I don't know how long this holdout's gonna last, but it should not be lasting much longer. I cannot. I I am. It must suck to be a Cowboys fan. America's team. I saw that C.D. Lamb tweeted LOL or something after Jerry Jones said this, and he removed America's team from his Twitter bio or something. That's crazy. All right, that's the episode. We have a quiz, and I have another unfortunate announcement that went my way again. My second win. It was another trick question. Am I going to have to win by trick questions now? Because I feel like the people that answer or put in their uh, quiz, they don't watch the episodes, so they actually do not know that they got it wrong. Because I know 18 of you do not watch this. But if you do, thank you a lot. But which non-quarterback was the first to throw for more than 10 touchdown passes in his career? Frank Gifford, Marcus Allen, Keith Byers, or Alvin Harper? All right, the correct answer was Marcus Allen. The real correct answer is Frank Gifford, and it says it right in the explanation, clearly. It says, both Allen and Byers threw six touchdowns in their careers, and Harper didn't throw any. Gifford was a hatback and flanker 
uh, for 12 seasons with the New York Giants from 1952 through 1964. In addition to rushing for 34 touchdowns, receiving an- another 43, Frank threw 14 touchdown passes of his own. Gifford was a 1977 Hall of Fame inductee. I'm starting to think you guys don't even look at the explanation or even know how to read at this point. 89%. Marcus Allen. That was incorrect, right? Keith Byer, 0%. Alvin Harper, 6%. Frank Gifford, 6%. And Marcus Allen, 89%. Whoever, if there's just one or two people that gets the Frank Gifford one right, all right, you guys actually aren't, like, you guys are actually pretty smart, not going to lie. All right, if, if I, like, if you guys are cheating, come on now. You can't win. All right, that is this week's episode. If you enjoyed, hit the like and the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified of every single up- upload this channel makes. Another 40-minute episode. Again, I do not do not know how this is even possible. But if you want to check out last week's episode, um, last week I talked about Jordan Love possibly being overpaid. Um, some of you guys agree on that. Some of you guys don't. But, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next week for another great episode on Deacons NFL Talk.